It's high risk. There's no room for mistakes. Before police bash down doors, they come here. Everybody's all set? To learn uh, how to stun, seize the stash, and the suspect. Take it away. All right, here we go. It's a training exercise, but there's nothing fake about the guns or the flashbang grenades. Our goal here is going to be to do uh, the proper, make the proper judgment and make sure that we are engaging the right target if it is, in fact, a threat target. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Moving. Moving. Raids like this happen in Canada, for real, almost every day. All room, clear right, clear right. They're called dynamic entries, better known as no-knocks, and they can mean the difference between life and death. All right, and next. But not just for police. October 7th, 2020. Nora Oust is at work when her day suddenly shatters. And I got a call asking for, I say, Anthony was with me. And I say, no. Anthony is her 23-year-old son. And I asked my, my daughter, where is Anthony? And she said, I don't know. Panicked, Nora rushes home. And when I come, there was police everywhere, everywhere, because I knew the police was here for my son. He has a record for dealing and is under house arrest, wearing a GPS tracker. If, they, if only did they come at the door and knock. That's all they had to do, come to the door and knock. But they came like terrorist. How it unfolds, <laughs> captured on a home security camera. <laughs> Nora's husband, Ben, says he came close to a heart attack that day. Other family was there too. A 94-year-old grandmother, two young kids. <laughs> I'm always here uh, every morning. It's a ritual, you know? So I was sitting right there. I came in and I said, what's, what's going on? I didn't have time to say on, I was down. And uh, they handcuffed me. And that's where you jumped. In my heart and my mind, it was, he's still alive, I just need to, I just need to touch him. Anthony falls 12 floors to his death. It makes me wonder how many other cases are out there. No knocks make news when the ending is tragic or when cops want to show off the stash. But how often do they really happen? Nobody's keeping count. But a judge recently found Ottawa police rely on them far too much. The Fifth Estate has spent months searching court files, digging up cases, like this one in Calgary. Police can't ram open the door, so in a surprising twist, and without warning, they shoot a projectile to shatter the lock. And in Kamloops, police in search of drugs ring the doorbell, but don't wait for an answer. So we have to be able to take over as quickly as we can. They might have the propensity to be violent. They might have weapons. They might have an objective where, you know, they're hellbent on not being taken into custody. You start your uh, surreptitious movement here. Nir Maman is a tactical trainer who's worked with agencies around the world, including the FBI and the RCMP. He says there's a time and place for dynamic entries. Our society is just saturated with uh, narco narcotic activity. And the evidence is unfortunately a, uh, um, a crucial element to 
being able to achieve that conviction in court or bring this case up before the, uh, the courts. Mm -hmm. Value of life, that is first and foremost. Secondary does come evidence. But the truth is, sometimes police get it wrong and knock down the doors of the innocent along with the guilty. What's this neighborhood called? The Carlton neighborhood. That's what drove Peter Schneider from this Ottawa neighborhood four years ago. Police get away with whatever they want and they can do whatever they want. After the way they treated me that night, I, tr I truly believe it, 100%. Bunch of cops pulled in here, and then the APV pulled up on the lawn right here. Acting on a bad tip, police storm into Peter's house, looking for guns and explosives. Still see the marks on the door. Came downstairs in my boxers and my tank top. I was standing right here. They were all across the front lawn here. I thought to myself, like, what could I have possibly done to have a SWAT team kick my door down? My heart was raging. And then they asked me to turn around again, so I did. They asked me to come down the steps backwards. Came down the steps backwards. When I got to here, they asked me to turn around again. So I turned around again. They asked me to get down on my hands and knees. And then they asked me to crawl to the curb over here. The APV vehicle is here. So I crawled to the curb on my hands and knees to here. Yes, I get they acted on a tip, but making me crawl to the curb made me feel degraded. I didn't deserve that. I felt like a dog or an animal. Back inside the house, six kids and police with guns drawn. What would a six and eight year old possibly do to harm a police officer? Is it all right if we bring Ethan in and speak to him a little bit? Sure. Ethan was 13 at the time. His best friend was sleeping over. What did they say? They said, Ethan Moore, please come down to the front door. I went down to the front door. They told me, to go back inside and wake up my brothers and my friend that was staying there. Uh, I woke them all up. The guns were drawn to our head the whole entire time. Uh, Yo, uh, the guns were drawn to your head? How were you feeling? Scared. What did your friend think? I haven't talked to him since this day, to be honest. The Ottawa police don't find guns or explosives. The tip was wrong. I'm afraid. I, I wish no harm upon any police officer, but I am afraid of them 100%. We've incorporated it in Canada too. It's a Mark Ertl says the tactic is trampling people's charter rights. He's a criminal lawyer who's fought dozens of no-knock cases. It, it seems like this is ripe for abuse, that there could be innocent people caught in the middle. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's if, if you uh, do a dynamic entry in someone's home and nothing is found inside the home, no one will ever hear about that. There's no place to review it and no attempt by the police to review it. And this is the reason why we should have some type of prior authorization here as a check on this conduct, which is, has gotten out of control. In Canada, police are allowed to execute warrants any way they see fit. All right, we're out. Go, 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 go. We're going, we're moving. But in most of the U.S., police need special permission to knock down doors like this. In the U.S., the, the warrants have to be signed off by the judge, and the threshold is uh, is very steep. Put your hands out in front of you. When you are kicking in a door to enter an environment that you don't have control of, but you have a threat inside that environment, the uh, consequences are grave. It's life and death. And death does happen. Shooting a police officer, it's an act that is normally met with the strictest of penalties. In a drug raid meant to surprise, an officer is shot dead. In a day, Basil Parasiris has gone from accused police killer to free man. The suspect's defense? Self-defense. Police methods came under fire. He says he thought it was a break-in. But should all suspects be treated as major threats? 
No, we're talking about every warrant for drugs. Uh, it, it, we're talking about low-level dealers. We're talking about people who live in their parents' basement. Since this is war on drugs, we, we've incorporated it in Canada too. It's a disaster, and this is just one complication of that disaster. I'm about to meet a couple who suffered the consequences, and even Ontario's top court says Ottawa police were out of line. For Kelsey Raycroft and Sam Bollowin, their front door is a constant reminder. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Hi, Kelsey. Oh, good. Here's where the, they used the, the banged. It, this did, does it, how does it make you feel seeing this just in your front doorway like this? At this point, it just really angry. Yeah, it brings back all the memories that these people got away with terrorizing us that night. And uh, he starts saying, "Everybody, this is a crack house. Everybody on the floor, you're all a, a drug trafficker. But police don't find drugs. Turns out their daughter's boyfriend was a suspected dealer. He had hidden a gun in their house and they had no idea. Your home is supposed to be your safe place. That's yeah. right. Do you feel that way? Oh, not that not way. Not now. Not now. And they probably deserve to have to fight the charges, the they turn to Mark Ertel. It happens to innocent people. Since the Charter of Rights and Freedoms has been enacted, the police have been told over and over again about mistakes they made, and they just keep making them. It takes four years, but a judge agrees. Sam and Kelsey were mistreated. The judge calls the use of a no-knock entry by Ottawa police serious misconduct and a casual disregard for charter rights. So why does the practice of no-knocks continue in Canada? When the country whose war on drugs inspired the tactic is moving away from it. Orlando is now the second major city to ban police from using no-knock warrants. Congress is also considering a law that would stop the practice altogether. What's that, man? Get that on your knees! The shooting of Breonna Taylor is one of the most notorious examples of an American no-knock raid gone wrong. The aftermath captured here on police body cam. There's somebody in there dead? Yeah, my girlfriend. It's our house. Ma'am, can you hear us? Go Metro Police Department. Inside the apartment, the aspiring nurse shot dead. Kentucky police were looking for a dealer, but got the wrong house. Now, there's a countrywide movement for change. In Canada, it takes this video and a young man's death to get us to pay attention to. After the break, informants and the innocent. Here to protect the community? Come on. When police act on a bad tip. I need to stop for a sec. Just give me a sec, okay? It's a controversial police tactic. Dynamic entries, smash the door, find the bad guys, get the evidence. They raided my house, they didn't find shit. Flashbang, it's I wreck in my crib. But what happens if the surprise raid is based on info that doesn't pan out? If you're Chris Wolf, street name Prezi, you write a rap and use actual footage to make the video. It's early morning, July 2020. This is at the front door of my house. Chris's home security cameras are recording as Ottawa police roll in. With military precision, they make their move. The door bust open. Yeah, One, a flashbang, two, and they all rush three, in. four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten SWAT officers. Yeah. At that point, there's ten people in the house, yeah. And yet, Chris has no criminal record. He's by himself, about to hop in the shower. So I was literally held there naked, um, with machine guns pointed at me for several minutes. Like, it was a while. And uh, I said, listen, I got to go to work soon. 
And then they said, what do you mean work? I said, yeah, I gotta go to work, you know? And uh, they were surprised that I had a job. Y'all can never do all this bullshit I do. Unwrap a brick, then I turn So why target Chris? Rapper by night, property manager by day. He raps about guns, kilos, and cash. Prezi fits the mold. You know, police might say, well, look at, look at the image he's putting out on these rap videos. He, mm -hmm. he's, he looks like a gangster. Yeah, but last time I checked, somebody looking like a gangster isn't a lawful reason to break into their house. And that's what you would consider it? A break-in? Yes. It is a break-in. In search of crack and cocaine, police tear his place apart. They never so, showed you a warrant? They never showed me a warrant, no. They find thousands in cash, Oxycontin too. Chris says it's a prescription and the money's from his contracting jobs, but police charge him anyway. After the arrest, Chris says police offer him a deal. Well, they offered me money and protection and they offered me to leave with absolutely no charges. And they used that to lean on you. Yeah, they, they just threatened me with those charges and ended up hitting me with those charges because I didn't go with their little, uh, their snitch plan. Still got the chain, boy, I didn't take that shit. Chris wasn't going to snitch, but plenty of others will. They'll even lie, and that can be a big problem with informants. There's no uh, good citizens signing up to rat out drug dealers. These are, these are drug dealers themselves, drug addicts. Uh, people with mental disabilities, people who are desperate for money and they get paid money by the police to provide information. And they're not reliable people. It's ridiculous, but the police routinely say that they are reliable people. And when the information's not reliable, the outcome can be devastating. So this is the last picture of my four kids together. And I can see the happiness, especially of his sister. Nora Aus knows her son Anthony made mistakes. Once caught with a gun, he also had a record of dealing. Ottawa police use that history to justify their search and get a warrant. This document says they expect to find cocaine and cash. They see Anthony as potentially armed and dangerous. But some of these details come from informants, and who they are is kept secret. Check out how much nobody ever sees. But the warrant gets approved, and police go in hard. They don't find a gun, but they do find drugs. Is finding some drugs during a search worth the loss of life? This is the weighing that I think needs to take place. Somebody needs to say, look, this is how you weigh the, the preservation of evidence against the preservation of life. And it's not just life, it's, this, it's the mental health of the people who are, whose homes are invaded, the innocent people who happen to be there. there. There should be some real weighing that takes place and there's none. So the ultimate goal in all of these interactions is to keep everybody safe, including the person who might be the subject of an investigation. The safest the route who, is to knock though, right? The safest new route is to never have to execute the search warrant in the first place. That's the safest route. The national group that advocates for police say no knock entries won't change in Canada unless the laws do. If our uh, legislators want to create a higher threshold for those entries, and that's, that's something that uh, needs to be discussed and decided upon, and then the police will comply with that direction if they get it. But at the moment, it's not a requirement. What do you say to the innocent people who are caught in the middle of these raids? I think any police agency or police officer uh, who's involved in an incident where an innocent person is injured would un unequivocally apologize for that and, and, and regret that it happens. So this is where they hit the side door. Even to this day, I don't feel safe. There's been no apology for Peter Schneider. The raid lasted a matter of minutes. Almost five years on, those minutes fill his days. I always think to myself, when are they coming back on a tip? When are they gonna kick my doors down and make my kids feel the way they felt that day 
for no reason. Peter sued Ottawa police and they settled. On his return to where it all went down, it's not long before officers drive up. Hi, how are you? Hey, good. I'm Brian. Hey, nice to meet you. Can you enjoy the call? Yeah, we're shooting something for CBC. How are you? Yeah. We're part of the neighborhood team. It's clear Peter's not comfortable. Watch how they slow down before passing him. Okay? Yeah. You see the way they were eyeballing me? I didn't do nothing there. I was just standing next to these guys. Look, I'm ready to start crying because I thought they were going to give me a ticket for not wearing a mask. Here to protect the community? Come on. I need to stop for a sec. Just give me a sec, okay? Not once have I had an apology. I'm afraid. There's no apology for Anthony's mother either, and no chance to say goodbye. Something has to be done. Tomorrow was somebody else. Today is us. My family. <laughs> 